Hey guys, I'm Chase Tobin, National Sales Manager for Arcs Perimeters. Today we're going to be discussing crash test ratings and certifications for vehicle barriers. When it comes to understanding the capabilities of vehicle barrier system, you need to understand the crash test certification and the crash test ratings that the system holds. Now, around the globe, there are multiple entities that provide crash test ratings, and all of them have different parameters for measuring the effectiveness of a specific vehicle barrier system. Today, we're gonna to discuss some of the different crash test certifications, how they're conducted, and we're gonna explain their rating systems. The three we will be focusing on today are PASS 68, IWA 14, and the ASTM standard. Let's start with the PASS 68. Developed by the British Standards Institute in 2005, this standard became one of the premier standards for hostile vehicle mitigation crash test specifications. A PASS 68 rating is made up of different segments, including numbers, letters, and symbols, all strung together to give a different rating. Each standard denotes specific parameters of the test itself and the vehicle used. This includes the, the test method, the vehicle type, a test speed, the impact angle, impact penetration, and the debris uh, dispersion. Now, let's break down the example on screen. The V stands for vehicle. This means that it was performed using a vehicle with a defined mass. The 7500 N3. This represents the weight and type of vehicle performed in the test. For this example, this means that the vehicle weighs 7500 kilograms and is in the category N3. The different types of categories are M1, a vehicle weighing 1500 kilograms. N1G a vehicle weighing 2,500 kilograms. N1, a vehicle weighing 3,500 kilograms. N2, a vehicle weighing 7,500 kilograms with no ballast. And finally, N3, a vehicle weighing 7,500 kilograms with ballast and up to 30,000 kilograms. The next segment is the speed at which the vehicle was traveling. In this example, the vehicle was traveling at 48 kilometers per hour or 30 miles an hour. Next, we have the angle and distance of penetration that the crash test was conducted. In this example, we have the number 90, which represents a 90 degree angle attack. Following this is the number 28.1. This means that the vehicle or the load traveled 28.1 meters after impacting the barriers. Last but not least, the final number, in this case 18, is the distance at which the debris travel beyond the impact site, and this is measured in meters. Up next, we have the IWA 14. The IWA stands for the International Workshop Agreement, and this is overseen by the International Organization for Standardization. The IWA 14 TAC-1 is considered to be the international standard for many organizations around the globe, including the Department of State. Like the PASS 68 standard, the certifications are granted after a successful completion of a crash test. Once this is completed, they are given a string of characters that represent the results of the now rated vehicle barrier. The string is shown the same as with the PASS 68. Let's discuss the example you'll see on the screen. V is for vehicle. 7500 is the weight of the vehicle in kilograms. N3 is the category of the vehicle conducted in the test. 48 is the speed at which the vehicle was traveling at when the test occurred in kilometers. 90 is the degree of impact. 28.1 is the distance to load travel after impact. You'll note the only difference in this string is that there is no requirement in the IWA 14 for the debris penetration. Now let's jump over to the ASTM, the American Society for Testing and Materials. Under ASTM standards, Vehicle weights are categorized into several different classifications, each to a specific type of vehicle, ranging from a small passenger vehicle to a heavy vehicle. Here's an example of how a vehicle barrier might be certified. We've got the PU30 slash P3 rating. This means you've got a pickup truck, as we've already defined as about 5,000 pounds, traveling at 30 miles an hour with a penetration rating of P3. This is anywhere from 23 feet to 98.4 feet. In the 80s, around 1985, the K ratings were established by the Department of State to include an L, 
uh, L3 and L1 rating. In 2003, they removed this L rating uh, to only accept less than one meter of penetration. The K rating system was designed uh, to encompass the front of the vehicle from penetrating more than 50 feet past that barrier. When we switched to the M ratings, we just expanded that protocol to make it more comprehensive. M ratings factor in how far the actual payload of the vehicle travels beyond the barrier. We call this payload penetration. This offers a more realistic understanding of the barrier's effectiveness in halting the most critical portion uh, of the vehicle. The maximum for the P rating is your penetration allowance. This is 98.41 feet. Anything beyond that does not get a rating. Vehicle crash test ratings offer a more calculated design for the vehicle barriers themselves and how they're deployed. This makes sure that this ensures that the vehicle barriers are tested and certified against the most relevant and severe impact scenarios. When you understand these crash test certifications and the weights corresponding to the crash test, law enforcement, city planners, and any other security personnel can make much more informed decisions about which barriers to deploy when they're shutting down streets, uh, when protecting your venues and your special events in your community. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope that you found this informative and educational. If you want more information, please reach out to us at info at arcsperimeters.com or visit the website www.arcsperimeters.com. My name is Chase Tobin. Thank you for watching.